how does the Chaos Dwarf's army best operate? Well, that's what we're going to look at. Their strengths and weaknesses, which parts of the army should be doing what, where, when and why. Let's go. Kicking it off with the strengths and weaknesses, the first thing is that they are very much an all-rounder faction. They've got a little bit of everything. Good infantry, good missiles, good cavalry, good monsters. They've got flying units, they've got skirmish cav. You name it, the Chaos Dwarfs have got it. They are as well incredibly tough overall with that high armor for most of the army. Also good leadership, good melee defense makes them very difficult overall to get rid of. And their last strength, while they do have many good units in many good areas, their ranged is far superior to most other factions, the missile units, the artillery. This is where the bulk of the work is going to be done for the Chaos Dwarfs. On to the weaknesses, the first one though, everything is very goddamn expensive for the Chaos Dwarfs, their units don't come cheap, thus you'll have pretty small armies of stronger units generally. The next weakness is in their anti-large department, while they do have some strong anti-large options, they don't have a ton of them and they're all very expensive, so there's no cheap anti-large that you can just throw on the flanks to protect from monsters and cavalry. And a last major Chaos Dwarf weakness is their speed, they're pretty slow overall, there are some faster parts of the army, but with the heavily armoured dwarfs being slower themselves, it generally favours them towards more of a defensive playstyle, Although with their wide variety of units and faster, speedier options, they can still play somewhat aggressively. So that's some of the main points about the army to be aware of, whether you're playing as them or against them. But Chaos Dwarf armies are designed to look something like this, where you've got a whole bunch of cheap units that are just kind of at the front and being used as fodder, and then you've got the stronger, more expensive Chaos Dwarf units that are going to output the damage and win the battle for you. So the first element and part of the strategy of this army is in the chaff. The crappy little cheap expendable boys. The goblin slaves, great for putting out the front of your army to absorb some of the missiles, to absorb some of the enemy charge bonuses, to get in the way and to make it difficult for the army to move around where possible. Maybe they can push and harass some missiles as well. And then you've got the orc slaves who can be used for pretty much the same job, but they're a little more valuable as they have that cheap armor piercing damage. So good for charging into stronger enemy infantry and cavalry to try and soften them up for your main units a little bit. So they're your first line of defense, but as I mentioned, it's all about the ranged units with this army. You've got some incredibly strong artillery, some great missile units as well, but they can only do their job for as long as they are protected. So protecting all these units is incredibly important, and to do that, first of all, we need a solid front line. So who is up to this task? Well, the first choice is the Chaos Dwarf Warriors. They are the cheapest option that you will have first of all. Eventually, you'll want to upgrade them into Infernal Guard, who are just exactly the same thing, but stronger, and then upgrade those eventually to Infernal Iron Sworn, who again are the same thing, but stronger, and they have a ranged attack. How can we tell they're all the same thing? Well, they're heavily armored, they've got a shield, they've got more melee defense than melee attack, and they don't have armor-piercing weapon damage. That tells you that this unit is not supposed to be dealing damage, it's just really good at staying alive, and that's the best choice for holding enemies back and keeping them from your ranged units. So upgrade them as you can afford them. Now there is also the great weapon versions of Chaos Dwarf Warriors and Infernal Guard, and these can be a frontline option if you didn't have a ton of missiles to protect, otherwise these are good for just keeping in reserve and going to deal with heavily armoured enemies where necessary. Although the Infernal Guard version is pretty tanky, so you could make a case for them as a frontline if you're facing some heavily armoured faction. Now let's talk about defending our flanks as Chaos Dwarfs. So you've got your nice sturdy front line that's going to hold the enemies back, protecting your precious backline missile and artillery units. Those are there ready to deal the damage. But oh scheisse, we've got big old spaces on our left and right where we can be easily flanked. Without any anti-large infantry, who are we going to put here? Well, I think the best option, at least early on in your campaign, is going to be the Orc Slaves. They can do this job well enough. The job of getting in the way at least. They won't stay there for a terribly long time from their low leadership and low armor, but if you can get two or three units of them out there, they'll do the job until you can afford the next best option, I think, a couple of units of Chaos Dwarf Warriors. These are pretty sturdy, even though they are a cheap unit, and they do have a charge defense, which is good against the type of things that are going to be trying to flank you, monsters and cavalry. And these are the more defensive option, and it's not a great option, it's kind of making do as we don't have any anti-large units, but as long as we can keep the missiles and artillery firing, it's all good. The best option though for defending your flanks is going to be the good old centaurs. These are a little more on the expensive side, but it's more of kind of an active defense with these. You can push on the enemy, you can keep them from even getting near your flanks with these big horrible boys. And they actually have an anti-large bonus, so they can take down cavalry and monsters quite effectively. Now this brings us on to our next point of pushing the enemy, something the Chaos Dwarfs can do very well. 
So you've got your crappy fodder up front to take some damage. You've got your sturdy front line and a bit of flank protection to look after all those missiles and artillery in the back line. You've got your bull centaurs defending your flank, although they have the option of pushing forward. Along with these other units, the flying units, the bale taurus, the great taurus, the lamassu, these can all be good pushing aggressive units. You've also got the Goblin Cav to this end, the Missile Variety, good skirmisher, good harasser. You've got the Spear Melee version, good for getting after backline missiles and artillery of the enemy, or maybe even a good unit for defending your flanks in the early game. And then you've got a bunch of War Machines like the Skullcracker or the Iron Demon. These could be pushing forward, getting after the enemy as well. So while the main bulk and power of your force is chilling back, blasting away at the enemies, these units can be pushing, harassing the enemy, looking for that hammer and anvil where possible, stopping the enemy missiles and artillery from firing. All of course in range of the main bulk of the army so both parts can kind of support each other. So that's kind of a rough general game plan you can follow using the Chaos Dwarfs as they were intended to be used. But of course, we don't have to do that, there's a million different options of ways you can play an army. Now, to talk about the anti-large of the Chaos Dwarves, as I've mentioned, there's not a ton of dedicated anti-large units, but there are some very strong ones, albeit most of them with hefty price tags. The main strongest best anti-large unit you've got is going to be those Bull Centaurs. These are just very versatile, good for getting after all kinds of large or infantry as well. And then your ranged units is probably going to be your next best option. So you've got your Fire Glaives, they have a very nice armor-piercing attack. And while they do have a bonus versus large on their melee attack, it's really not up to much. It's only five, which is very small. Then being an anti-large melee unit is really a last resort, I would say, if they've run out of ammo. Otherwise, you want to be using the ammo first, 100%. Possibly the strongest anti-large unit you'll have though is the Chaos Dwarf Blunderbusses. They can kill things very quickly. Large single entities that stand out from the crowd will be absolutely destroyed by these. Cavalry as well if you can get a good angle on them. And then you've got your Gobbo Archers with Fire. These can be a slightly cheaper alternative, good in the early game. Especially powerful though if you team them up with some of the weaknesses to fire that you can inflict on the enemy. These can be pretty dangerous as well. And then there's the old Death Shrieker rocket launcher. This can be good against single entities, perhaps. It's a little bit weird, though. It's almost like not very powerful, but also kind of good, I guess, over the long run. But certainly feels like a slower, less reliable way to get a large unit dead compared to the missile units. You've also got the Bull Centaur Torak, who can be good against those single entities, maybe Lords and Heroes specifically, especially if he's trying to protect another Lord or Hero. And then also the Infernal Castellan can play the anti-large role. Again, he has that anti-large melee attack, but it's only five. It's kind of pointless. But he does have that strong missile attack, good for shooting down single entities perhaps, or flying units especially. So some solid options, just very expensive. And then left over, we've got a few damage dealer units that can be good in many situations. The Kadai Fireborn, a great anti-infantry unit, very strong, although somewhat fragile. And of course the Destroyer, same thing, anti-infantry, could both also be good against cavalry perhaps, but what they really need is this little fella, the Demon Smith, who comes with the Reforge ability that can heal them up. Because when they drop below 50% health, they lose their unbreakable trait, and they have low leadership otherwise, so it can be a bit risky. And then of course we have the Immortals, the Regiment of Renown unit. These are very strong anti-infantry, one of the strongest anti-infantry units in the game. Great for churning through any kind of infantry. And then we've got the Iron Demons. This can be good as a ranged unit or you can kind of charge it in, use it like a bit of a chariot to mow things down and disrupt. As for your Lords, it's pretty much the same deal as any other faction really. They're strong, powerful single entities, great in melee typically, some maybe not, but mostly good in melee for the Chaos Dwarves. Some of them have got magic, which is always powerful, and again, magic, kind of the same sort of thing across all factions. I recommend the Lore of Hashut though, I've got a guide to that, I'll put it at the end of the video. And the Lore of Fire, because all of the weaknesses to fire that you can inflict. And that brings us to the powerful tactic for the Chaos Dwarves, all their ways to stack fire. What I mean by this is stacking weaknesses to fire. Astrogoth here, he can get Kindle Flame from the Lore of Fire. His Black Hammer of Hashut ability gives 20% weakness to fire and the spell Ash Storm from the Lore of Hashut gives 20%. So all in all, you can give an enemy a weakness to fire of 60%. You then hammer it with fire damage from all your fiery units and well, that's a lot of damage very quickly. You can even stack up to 100% damage with the Sorcerer Prophet. I've got a video if you want more details about that though, I'll link it at the end. Ultimately though, fire damage is very powerful for this army because there's so much of it. All of these units you see here cause fire damage, so if you can employ some weaknesses to fire wherever possible against strong units, that could be some serious bonus damage that will add up the more you use it. So that overall is how you can play the Chaos Dwarfs and sort of how they're designed to play. This half army of chaff and crap 
as I say, with the stronger units on top. This example here is quite an early game army. Eventually, though, you might be able to get a super powerful army once you've got the unit caps and the money. This being an example, as you can see here, we've got a Sorcerer Prophet Lord of Hashut, a front line of Infernal Iron Sworn, super strong, and then defending the flanks, a couple of units of Great Weapon Infernal Guard. Then it's just a lot of missiles, two fire glaives, two blunderbusses, a whole bunch of artillery, got a dreadquake mortar in there. So that's all the backline being protected by the strong infantry. And then I've got a whole bunch of centaur cavalry just to push forward and smash the enemy and disrupt the enemy where necessary. Very expensive though at 5.5k. Another option you could try out though, how about a gobbo army? This one full of a whole bunch of goblins, a much cheaper army overall. We've got a cutthroat front line with a few units of sneaky gits for trying to get behind and vanguard deploy into that back line. The same thing with the spear cav and harassing with the skirmish cav a little bit. Then we got some hobgoblin archers just for general archer usage. And then a couple of units of dwarfs just to mix into the army to spread around that malign authority ability that gives all the goblins plus eight leadership. Very important to try and get that around the army as much as possible. So for me, I put two units of armor piercing boys in there just for the armor piercing as well. And then I've got the bull centaur hero who is some anti-large and also will spread that leadership with malign authority when he's near the gobbos. And the same with the lord as well. So we can try and get the gobbo leadership leadership up a little bit. Also, we can put our Lord skill points into useful places, fervent fodder, that'll boost up our goblin potential. Also the firing drills. This can be a fun little army to mess around with. Obviously, it kind of works differently from the main Chaos Dwarf army, but it's a fun little different kind of traditional way to play with the Chaos Dwarfs as well. Or if you want something high mobility, you could go with something like this. A lot of cheap gobbos and some orcs, but mostly centaurs after that. So high mobility and all these centaurs running around, hammer and anviling, charging, smashing everything they can, while all the infantry just gets in the way. A couple of missile units in there, also got the Infernal Castellan just for a bit of ranged in case there's any flying units. And a Sorcerer Prophet of Metal with this one. A fun build using one of your strongest unit types in the centaurs, although it does require a lot of micro, cycle charging all those centaurs. Well, there we go, the Army Guide Part 2 for the Chaos Dwarfs. Now, this was a little bit of an experimental video, so I would like some feedback on it. If you're interested in doing that, I'll leave a pinned comment below this video. Feedback me on that. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Thanks to all the patrons who support this channel. I will see you.